Yo, what's up, everyone? My name's Dave, and you know what? You win, okay? I'm giving up on Bash. All of the comments have finally gotten to me. You guys have broken through. Bash is an old language. It's a dead language. No one programs it anymore. You are out of touch. You're from a different era, and you guys win, okay? I'm done programming in Bash. I'm going to try and jump to a different era, okay? So today we're going to learn how to program in assembly, all right? You guys ready for this? I figure this will be more approachable than Bash for some of you, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's make our first assembly program, hello.asm. We're going to write hello world in assembly. So how do we get started? Well, we have to make sections in our code. Why would you make sections? Well, if you're familiar with the binary commands on your system, maybe like, you know, ls, um, any sort of executable program, you will know that it's in a format called elf, E-L-F the, what is it, executable and linkable format? I think that's what it stands for, don't quote me on that. Um, and in the ELF header, it defines a whole bunch of different sections. So you would have your data, you would have your text. Data is where we put our variables, our global variables, and text is where we put the actual code. This is read-only, this is where we actually start programming. So what can we do here? Well, the first thing we have to do is we have to make a little variable for ourselves. we'll call it message, and we will DB, define some bytes, okay? And what are these bytes gonna be? About Hello world, that seems pretty common, awesome. And then what do we do in our text section? This is really simple. We just export a label. So when it comes time to actually link this executable and make it executable, we will know where to jump to. On Linux, it's gonna expect it to be under bar start. So here we go, under bar start, like this, bam. And so how do we get started? First thing we have to do is we have to figure out what are we gonna do? We're gonna write hello world to the screen and then we're gonna exit. So we have to write to the screen and then we have to exit. We are going to need two syscalls for this. We're gonna need the write syscall, W-R-I-T-E is what I'm saying. And we are gonna need the exit syscall. So let's go ahead and look these up. Man to write, this will pull up the syscall man page and you can see that write returns a size T. That's how many bytes were successfully written. We're gonna ignore this. We're not gonna to check to see if write works or not. We are going to give it the arguments in this order the file descriptor that we want to write to, this will be standard out, so it'll be one. The bytes that we want to write, this is a pointer to the bytes, and there's no terminating null byte or anything, so we need to actually specify the count, how many bytes we want to send. So remember that, because that's what we're going to need when it comes time to actually write this. And so the first thing we're going to do is we have to say that we want to use the write syscall. Now the write syscall is four, so we can just move, uh, ooh, there we go. So we can just move into EAX, our first register, four. So we're basically saying, hey, we want the right syscall. What's the next thing we can do? Well, the first argument, do you remember what it was? It was the file descriptor. We're gonna use standard out. So into EBX, we're gonna put one because one references standard out. Then into our next register, this would be the next argument, ECX, we need a pointer to the data and the data is message. When we actually come time to assemble this program, this will get swapped out for whatever address is being used up here. This will be different on your system. It's virtual memory, so it'll be compiled once and the address will always stay the same. Um, but we don't have to memorize addresses. This is super nice. We just put a label there and then when it comes time to actually assemble and link it, link it then it will get put into place. The final thing we need to do is we need to actually put the length of the string that we're gonna print, the number of bytes to print. So we can see up here, hello is five characters, world is five characters, we have a space in between, five plus five plus one is 11, there we go. And then our final thing here is we need to actually execute this. How do we execute it? Well, we simply just do a nice little interrupt, int 80, there we go, 80 in hex. I'm just saying 80, but yeah, in hex. What's the next thing we need to do? We need to exit. So we've written to the screen now. Now we need to actually exit. How do we do that? Man to exit. This is the man page for the exit syscall. Exit is super simple. It takes one argument and this is the status code to exit. You know how programs have a status code? Like if I echo this, you can see that it's zero there. We should probably print zero too if we were successful. We're not checking to see if we were successful. So let's just assume we're successful. I think that's safe. Move into EAX, the syscall number itself, which is one. And then we're gonna move into EBX. This is the first argument to, or the, sorry, the, yeah, the first argument to the exec or exit syscall. Oh, I'm getting all twisted up here. Zero, we are going to exit zero here. And then just like above, we are gonna actually run this syscall. We're gonna fire off the interrupt and then we're gonna go. So what do we do now that we have that? Well, first thing we have to do is we have to assemble it. So the format we're gonna use here is ELF32. We are gonna make a 32-bit binary for x86 assembly instructions. Then we're going to create an object file here. So here's our assembly portion. And then we have to give it the name of the file we're assembling. So here we go. Now we should have an object file. We should have hello.o. Perfect, we have it, awesome. Now we can actually link it. This is where we make it executable. So we can do elf i386. This is just a way of saying, you know, x86 instruction set 32 bit, blah, 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 blah. Let's output to hello. That'll be the name of our binary. And the file we're reading in is hello.o. So there we go, a lot of setup there, but now we should have a file called hello. We can run it. 
And it prints, hello world. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Hey, Dave, there's no new line there. Don't worry. We're going to figure that out. All right, I'm not going to leave you guys hanging. We'll get to it. So let's take a look at what we have in our current directory. As you can see, we have a file there I haven't shown you. I will show you this file now. It's called run. I don't feel like running those commands again. So I stored those commands in a bash script. I'll show you it with syntax highlighting, actually. There we go. So it's a really simple script that just runs the uh, assembly. It, it runs the assembler, runs the linker, and then it actually runs the program. And it will give you any sort of errors that happen along the way. So I can just run run and it will reassemble it, relink it, and then run it. So super nice. So we can make changes and iterate on it quickly. So what's the first thing we can do here? How can we clean this up? Well, we don't have a new line. So let's go ahead and add a new line, right? Put a new line here. Look at that. The syntax highlighter shows it's a new line. So everything should just work, right? Well, it doesn't just work. So what's going on? Well, obviously it's not gonna work. We put the length of the string as 11 here, but we just added a new character, only one character because it's a new line. So we need to change 11 to 12 and then it will work, right? Let's go ahead and run that. And we got a literal backslash. We don't have the N, we just have the literal backslash. So what is going on here? This is super duper weird. Well. I'm not gonna keep you in suspense. This is going to get treated as literal bytes. So we have a literal backslash. There is a little literal N there, but because we're using length 12, we're not gonna see it. We can get rid of this and then we can just append a new line. So what's going on here? These are just bytes. So we need the ASCII number for a new line. This is the ASCII table and the new line is 10. You can just put a 10 there. I prefer to put hex A here. That just is how I like to see it. So if we go ahead and run this now, we will have our new line. Hey, look at that. Isn't that awesome? What if we wanted to add some, I don't know, exclamation marks, right? Make it kind of exciting. What happens now? Well, we lost the new line because we hard coded our length. So is there any sort of way we can get rid of this hard coding here? Well, of course there is, right? We could make a little variable where we defined bytes above. We can do something different. We can make len is the name of our variable. And instead of defining bytes, we can call equate. So we can equate len with 12. Now we can swap out every place we use 12. We can just swap it for len here and this will just work. It will still have the same problem because we've hard coded 12, but this will just work. So what can we do instead? Can we get the length of this? Well, yes, but not directly. We can in a roundabout way get the length. And the way we do that is we get the address of the beginning of this and we get the address of the beginning of the next instruction. So basically what we do, I'm kind of just, uh, I'm belaboring the point here. I'll just show you real quick. Where we currently are, subtract, where message is. So our current address minus the beginning address of the message, and that will equate to the length of it. Kind of a gnarly syntax if you've never seen it before, but the beauty of this is we can rerun it and we can see we have two exclamation marks and a new line. We could change this to, yo, what's up? And we run it and we get, yo, what's up? And of course we exit zero. You could go down here. You could be like, I don't want to exit zero. I want to exit, uh, I don't know, five. Change that to a five, rerun it, check the exit code and we exited five. And if you stuck with me this far, congratulations. You have stuck around for what was originally going to be an April Fool's Day joke and the ultimate April Fool's Day joke ever because I got you to watch a tutorial on Hello World in assembly. So you're in it deep. Go ahead and hit that follow and subscribe button.